Good morning and welcome to University Lutheran Church here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. My name is Pastor Fritz Fowler and it is my pleasure to welcome you today to worship on this All Saints Sunday. University Lutheran Church is both a congregation and campus ministry located in the West Philadelphia neighborhood uh, here in Pennsylvania, in Philadelphia. Why am I hearing myself? No. Good morning uh, on this All Saints Sunday to worship. A few notes for you this morning is that all the materials you will need will be on your screen. Uh, to submit a prayer request, a joy, or a concern, you can do so by heading to our website, unilufila, U-N-I-L-U-P-H-I-L-A dot org. Scrolling down on the home page, you'll see a button there to submit a prayer request, and you're invited to do that any time throughout the service or during the week. There's a special box there for you to click if you would like me to reach out to you and to follow up on your prayer request. Today is All Saints Sunday. You'll notice here that our color of the day is white. We'll hear more about that this morning in the sermon. But you are invited, if you don't have one yet, to go grab yourself a candle and to light it. Perhaps you light it in this morning in honor of a loved one, perhaps in memory of a saint that you have known or a saint that you do not know this morning. We invite you to have that. Finally, welcome. Finally, welcome this morning. We are so glad that you are joining us here for worship. We begin this morning with our welcome that we will read responsively. We remember you, O oh God, the countless saints of history who have blazed a trail of courage through time. We remember, O oh God, the tender touch of loved ones, the example of heroes, the healing words of comforters, the remarkable acts of fearless ones. We remember, O oh God, the gentle strength of grandmothers, the loyalty of friends, the kindness of strangers, the joy of children, the sacrifice of parents. We remember, O oh God, the supreme love of Jesus, the blessing of his spirit, the reminder of his words, the sharing of his suffering, the glory of his resurrection, shown forth in the lives of his disciples, young and old, dead and living, articulate and silent, strange and familiar, brilliant and ordinary. We remember in every time and place the saints of God who have shown us the Lord. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us worship God with joy.
we continue with confession and forgiveness on this All Saints Day. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Siblings in Christ, God hears the cries of all those who call out in name. And through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion, in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is, what we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him will be him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Word of God, <clears throat> word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. A reading from Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. The praise of God shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the lowly hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt God's name together. I sought the Lord who answered me and delivered me from all my terrors. Look upon the Lord and be radiant and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear the Lord and delivers them. Taste and see what, that the Lord is good. Happy are they who take refuge in God. Fear the Lord, you saints of the Lord, for those who fear the Lord lack nothing. The lions are in want and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. O Lord, you redeem the life of your servants, and those who put in their trust in you will not be punished.
The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning and greetings to you, saints of University Lutheran Church, and to those who are beyond. Welcome this morning to worship. This day of remembering the saints on a single day originated sometime in the 4th century. It was in the 8th century that this festival was moved to November 1st in England and in Ireland to Christianize the Celtic Harvest Festival of Samhain, which marked the beginning of winter and communal attention to the dead. Traditionally, here at University Lutheran Church, we have, all, uh, we have marked the first Sunday of November as All Saints Sunday. In other congregations, they gather together on whatever day November 1st falls on for worship. This year, we are blessed that we are able to celebrate All Saints Sunday on All Saints Day, November 1st. I remember I was teaching a confirmation class one time, and one of the students raised their hand and asked, Why is All Saints Sunday so special? And which saint are we commemorating on All Saints Sunday? That's a good question. It was a really good question. First, on All Saints, we commemorate those that we have loved. We remember our mother, our father, our grandmothers, our grandfathers. We remember our children. We remember our aunts, our uncles. We remember beloved school teachers and mentors. We remember pastors and Sunday school teachers and those who have taught us the faith. Perhaps even we remember a dear pet who was a part of our lives and who taught us what it means to love unconditionally. We remember and we commemorate all those people 
whom we've loved and have held a special place in our lives. Just a few minutes ago, during our musical reflection, we saw pictures and images of some of the loved ones, just a small number of the loved ones that you, Saints of University Lutheran, submitted over the last few weeks. Traditionally, we would gather together here in the front of our altar and to light candles as a part of our liturgy, remembering our loved ones, those who have made an impact on our lives. It's for all of these saints that we pray. Second, on all saints, we commemorate those loved by others. On this day, we give thanks to and, and, and honor those whom we might not have known, but were loved by someone else. We, in the words of Revelation 7-9, describes the saints as a number no one can count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages. I love how one writer puts it when talking about All Saints Day. All Saints brings into focus our own beloved dead while also stretching our imagination toward the whole company of saints, more diverse and populous than we can fully comprehend. I think of this morning people like Walter Wallace Jr., who was killed just a few blocks away here in West Philadelphia this week. I think of his mourning children and his wife. I think of his mom who never got to say goodbye or I love you one more time. I think of his child his youngest child, who was just born this week on Wednesday, who will never meet their father, but will only hear the stories about his life. I think of the 800 victims who have been fatally shot by police officers this year. One in four, like Mr. Wallace, who lived with a mental health struggle. All Saints Day reminds us that Mr. Wallace was fearfully and wonderfully created, and his life had value. His life was sacred, and Walter Wallace Jr. is a child of God. And then on this November 1st, as we enter the eighth month of the COVID-19 pandemic, we remember the saints who have fallen victim to the virus. We remember those who have died without the loving embrace of family and friends by their side. We pray for those who did not get to say goodbye that did not get to he hold their loved one's hands as they passed from this life into the resurrection, a promise of eternal life. We pray for those in health care and beyond who were willing to step in and to sit with the dying so that they did not die alone. We remember on this All Saints Sunday and all of the days, all of the lives that have been impacted and so many that we encounter on a daily basis who are grieving untold losses. The loss of loved ones, the loss of employment, the loss of hope, the loss of confidence that the future will get any better. It's for all these saints 
that we pray. On this All Saints, we commemorate those who are saved by grace. In the New Testament, the word saint is used to refer to all Christians. It's interesting to note that it is never used to refer to the most faithful Christians in Scripture. You will not find the name Saint Paul or Saint Mary or Saint Peter with that title. That's because this idea that some Christians are super Christian and are worthy of the title saint is not biblical. For in the New Testament, all Christians are saints. Someone who is saved is who is saved by God's grace is a saint. Someone, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 6, 11, you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and in the spirit of our God is a saint. All Christians are saints and all saints are Christians. Luther writes about this using the Latin word simul justice et pector, which means simultaneously justified and sinner. Luther understood Christians as saints who are forgiven sinners as a result of God's grace in our lives. Martin Luther wrote that the saints are sinners too, but they are forgiven and absolved. Beloved, you are a saint. You, as a child of God, baptized in the name of the triune God, are celebrated and remembered on this All Saints Sunday. For all of these saints, for all of you, we pray. With so much going on, dear saints, in our city, in our nation, and across the world. It can be hard to find hope on this November 1st, 2020. And so we turn to the words of Scripture, which I think do provide an immeasurable amount of hope. In our Gospel lesson today, we heard the Beatitudes from Matthew. These 12 verses remind us that we are blessed even when we are dealing with everyday life and challenges that life brings. Notice the text, friends. It doesn't say, blessed are those who used to mourn or those who were poor in spirit or those who made peace before. Rather, it says that those blessed are those who are living in service to God now. Right now, the blessed are on the front lines serving God and their neighbors despite the risks that they face, despite the persecution that might find them, despite the danger that lays waiting out there. I think we saw this played, uh, played out just this week here in West Philadelphia as clergy from across the street, uh, across the city gathered in West Philadelphia to march for justice for Walter Wallace Jr. The photos that emerged of the faithful marching down Locust and 60th Street compared to the force of the, of the police department that met them as expecting violence. The faithful who gathered to comfort and to mourn and to sit with Walter's family and children. I think if you have your Bibles with you and you were to open them up, and you went to Matthew chapter 5, and if you have a study Bible or a Bible that includes footnotes or uh, 
uh, uh, study notes at all, there is probably a footnote there where the word blessed appears. You see, the Greek word for blessed, which is makaronios, can be translated also as happy. Happy are those who serve, who love, who care for, who advocate for others. I love how Pastor Tiffany Cheney writes about this happiness in her article in Living Lutheran. She writes, it's not about a lightweight, fleeting happiness common in our culture now, but a deep, lasting gladness. One of the great contradictions in this text through the lens of today's culture is understanding how it is that someone is blessed and happy, while at the same time poor in spirit, mourning, meek, hungering, and thirsting for righteousness, merciful, and persecuted for their faith. These sound much like, much more like sad and disgusted occurrences than blessed and happy ones. But in this contradiction, we discover what it means to truly be blessed. In the very state of where we may least expect him. Jesus shows up, and we are blessed. This may not always look like the world's view of a blessing. It might not be about physical and material blessings, but rather abundant spiritual blessings. There may be no cash value but this blessing from Jesus feels like pure gold. Dear saints, this All Saints Sunday might look and feel a lot different than what we're used to. And in reality, it very much is. But we gathered today. We gathered today over technology and in different locations, keeping each other safe, to give thanks for the saints who have gone before us, the saints that we know and the saints that are unknown. We gather together today to give saints, to give thanks for the saints still among us. And for the saints that are still to come, we give thanks for the examples of the faithful living that the saints that we know about, the saints that we loved, and the saints that are unknown, that have navigated the stormy waters of life. And also for the faithful acts of service that we are empowered to do in the lives of others sharing the love of Christ with the world that God loves so very much. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Let us remember all the saints who let us remember all the saints who have served the church and the world as we offer our prayers to God, responding to each petition with the words, save us from all our troubles. We praise you, O God, for all the saints who have ministered in your church. Give us now, we pray, pastors, deacons, teachers, and lay leaders who will guide your people in the way of truth. Bless all who minister during this difficult time. Hear our prayer, O God. Save us from all our troubles. We praise you, O God, for all the saints who lived in communion with animals, with the earth and the seas. Bless the earth that all creatures will live out your intention for their place in creation. Hear our prayer, O God. Save us from all our troubles. We praise you, O God, for all the saints who were peacemakers. Give us now government authorities who will strive for peace between and within their nations. Hear our prayer, O God. Save us from all our troubles. We praise you, O God, for all the saints who strove for equality and justice. Guide us during the election week that those who seek the common good will be elected, protect those who vote, and preserve our nation from all forms of civil discord. Hear our prayer, O God. Save us from all our troubles. We praise you, O God, for all the saints who work to renew society. Give us now persons who will struggle against prejudice, lethargy, and evil, and will work to improve the lives of others. Hear our prayer, O God. Save us from all our troubles. We praise you, O God, for all the saints who ministered to the needy. Give us now people who will care for those in need. We pray for those in need, the war-torn, the unemployed, those who experience discrimination, those who are weighed down with anxiety, and those who need, whose needs are on, known only to you. Hear our prayer, O God. Save us from all, all our troubles. We praise you, O God, for all the saints who nurse the sick. Support physicians, nurses, and medical staff, especially as they confront the continuing crisis of the coronavirus. Hear our prayer, O God. Save us from all our troubles. We praise you, O God, for all the faithful who have suffered in body, mind, or spirit. Give wholeness to the sick, especially to those with the coronavirus. Send your healing power on those whose names we call out to you now. Hear our prayer, O God. Save us from all our troubles. We praise you, O God, for all the saints, both the famous and the forgotten, who live in faith and now live in you. We thank you, O God, especially for those whom we name, hear now, aloud, or in the silence of our hearts, being us, being us at the last with them to be in your trying presence. Hear our prayer, O God. Save us from all our troubles. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to you, O God, forever and ever. Amen.
The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Glory to you, O God, for your creative word, making and mending all things, evoking the cosmic hymn of praise, and singing a love song for your beloved, your vineyard, your flock, your people. With all creation we sing glory, glory. Blessed are you for your liberating word, speaking through Moses and the prophets, encountered in the Gospels, and proclaimed in the assembly. Your freedom, forgiveness, and life for the world. With the whole world we say blessing, blessing. Holy are you, O God, for your living word. Among us, wherever we gather, welcoming everyone to your feast and with grace and generosity, bringing to earth the kingdom of heaven. With saints and angels we cry, Holy, Holy. Clothe us in your loving spirit, flowing from the crucified and risen one, and keep us awake to your presence and the people and places you call us to serve. Glory, praise, and blessing are yours, Holy God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together as Jesus taught his friends and disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this morning for worship here at University Lutheran Church. Our prayer is that you felt inspired and that you encountered the Holy Spirit and that you will leave this time of worship blessed. We have a couple of announcements we want to share with you in a short movie before we end our time together today. If you're new to University Lutheran, we invite you to connect with us. My email uh, is pastor at unilufilla.org. It's also on your screen. I'd love to connect with you. If you're new to our church community, I'd love to hear more about what brought you to University Lutheran to connect and to connect with you and share how you can be involved in the ministries of University Lutheran. There's a couple of worship opportunities that are upcoming this week. Uh, the first is that you can join us every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. for morning prayer. We gather together on Zoom and YouTube Live. If you're watching this and it's no longer Sunday morning, uh, know that you're invited to join us uh, every Sunday uh, live at 10.30 a.m. We will gather together on Tuesday evening. For those here in the United States, on Tuesday there is a presidential election uh, as well as a number of local elections taking place. We will gather on uh, Tuesday night at 8.30 for a special uh, uh, prayer service, a special compliment service for election night, 8.30 p.m. The polls close at 8, and then we will gather at 8.30 on Zoom with our siblings at St. Mary's Episcopal. There is candlelight compliment every Thursday night, so we'll gather again this Thursday night at 8.30 p.m. Uh, on Thursday as well for spoken compliment. There's a couple of opportunities to connect here with the leadership at University Lutheran. The first of those is tea time. This is kind of an informal office hour. Feel free to stop by on Wednesday at 2 p.m. and to join me in any conversation. Uh, that you would like. I'm also available by appointment, and you can feel free to email me if you'd like to schedule a time. Uh, Brian, our director of music, is always in search for volunteer cantors. If you're willing to sing or to help lead the liturgy, either from where you are at or from our sanctuary here, uh, please be in touch with him. 
We have a couple of save the dates. Uh, tomorrow, Monday, November 2nd, and next Monday, November 9th, we will be offering free flu shots out on Innovation Plaza. No insurance is required. Feel free to come on out um, and to get your flu shot on Innovation Plaza tomorrow or next Monday. In just a few weeks, we'll host our American uh, Red Cross Blood Drive on Wednesday, November 18th. We also invite you, uh, if you're eligible and able and it is safe for you to do so, to help give blood during this season where there is a shortage because of the pandemic and so many are not able to give. On your screen in front of you, you can see that there's a couple of different ways that you can uh, help support the ministry of University Lutheran Church. We could not come here to, with you to worship with you and to lead worship for you and to use our building in a number of different ways if it wasn't for your financial gifts. And so thank you. Thank you for faithfully supporting our congregation and our campus ministry. For those of you who are a member of University Lutheran, this past week you received information about our stewardship campaign this fall. Our theme this year is called to serve, celebrating 50 years of University Lutheran. November today marks our 50th year together as a church, as University Lutheran Church. Uh, we invite you as you uh, look forward to 2021 to prayerfully consider uh, how you can continue to financially support our congregation and our campus ministry. Each week during the month of November, we will be highlighting a different group of people that we have been called to serve as a church. This week, we are talking about, and we will see in just a moment, how we are called to serve as a campus ministry, following our theme, Called to Serve. And so we have a little video for you now that shares with you just one way on how the impact that we have made, how we have been called to serve with our campus ministry. Sorry? Oh. and from our congregational president with more information about where we find ourselves this fall as a congregation and campus ministry in terms of our financial, uh, our financial position that we are in, as well as how you can be involved with 2021 and our stewardship campaign called to serve.
that for those who might not have heard, uh, tomorrow morning this video will be sent out via our newsletter as well as more information about how you can participate in our uh, stewardship campaign called to serve. And over the next five weeks, we'll be highlighting the different communities that University Lutheran Church has had an opportunity to serve over the last 50 years uh, that we have been here in West Philadelphia. Now, saints of University Lutheran, we turn to our blessing where God blesses us and sends us for mission into the world. We pray that you have a blessed week. Know that we are here for you. Uh, if there is anything that we can do for you, please do not hesitate to reach out to us here uh, at uh, the church. And we hope to see you on Tuesday evening for our uh, election night special compliment service. But before that, those of, most of you uh, received a newsletter article this past week where I shared with you my... Uh, that this past week I received and I have accepted a call to serve as the new lead pastor at Trinity Lutheran Church in Lansdale, Pennsylvania. My final Sunday with you will be on Christ the King Sunday, just a few short weeks away. Know that it has been an honor and a privilege to serve as your pastor, and that my time here at University Lutheran Church means a lot to me, and it is an experience that I will never forget. I look forward to uh, the times that we will have to say goodbye formally and informally over the next few weeks, knowing that the pandemic creates uh, a lot of uncertainties about us being able to gather together physically. But your congregational leadership uh, is doing all that they can to provide some opportunities to where we can say goodbye uh, together with one another and to give thanks for our shared ministry over these last five and a half years. Saints of University Lutheran, I send you out with this blessing. For all that God can do within us, for all that God can do without us, thanks be to God. For all in whom Christ lived before us, and for all in whom Christ lives beside us, thanks be to God. For, this, for all the Spirit wants to bring us, for the where the Spirit wants to send us, thanks be to God. The blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and on your way together, now and forever. Amen.
in peace remember the poor. Thanks be to God. Have, our video is working now, and so we're going to turn back and to watch our called to serve uh, video featuring Molly Bucklin, one of our alumni students. I don't hear anything, Steve. Oh, we apologize again for that technical issue. We thought we had fixed it, but we promised. Uh, it will still go out tomorrow uh, morning. Thank you for joining us this morning for worship, and we hope you have a blessed and wonderful day. God's blessing.